The ball of energy, Brian Kilmeade, the president and the freedom fighter, Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and the bat, their battle to save America's soul. And I want to get to that because this is fascinating. I love the stuff that Brian writes. And unlike some people who come on my show, and I, I don't actually lie to people about reading their books, but I can't read everything. I actually do read Brian's books. I actually do You read your books. I have all of them. They're great. You do such a great job. Uh, I got to get, though, your reaction, Brian, off the top here with this ongoing Rittenhouse trial. I I mean this the the prosecution's behavior, the things that have been withheld, the stuff that we're we're now hearing and then of course some of the takes from people in media and and people on the left. I, it's been really just kind of stunning. It really does feel like self-defense is on trial here. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, no one knows guns better than you. So I'll just take it from the non-gun owner, but uh but I'm for I'm pro gun owner, but I don't grow up in New York. I'm not not being a hunter upstate. I wasn't growing up with guns. Never against them. Understand right. it, but not like you. I didn't go in front of 18,000 people with uh, the CNN in order to defend your uh, rights. That was incredible, uh, the way you were able to handle that and keep your composure. But in terms of the court TV and what we're seeing, I never liked court TV. The last trial I really watched was OJ's, and I'm not used to that type of drama. What I saw over the last two days has been stunning. I would think that this is scripted TV, that they got to get it done in 44 minutes, got to create the crime, see the crime, and solve the crime. When I'm watching the prosecution blow up, I'm saying to myself, I was alone. I go, is this happening? Yeah. Is this happening? Did they, they think about this? They're just asking a guy who does not have the ability to be coy or deceptive. Did you try to kill him? No. Was he coming after you? Yes. What did he say to you? This. Uh, what was he? He grabbed the battle with a gun. And, okay. And there's tape to back it all up. And the question is, you're allowed to carry a gun. He clearly was attacked. How many shooters run to the cops after an incident and explain themselves? They actually go to the cops for protection. And why did they need it, Dana? My, my thing is not only guns, but I'll take a step back. The fact that it wasn't too long ago where there was a war on cops that we're in the middle of and paying the price for now, but then the cops were told, don't be cops. Allow Kenosha to burn, allow it to be destroyed, uh, Jacob Blake walks through two stun guns and with a kid in the back of the car, overpowers two cops, and many people say it was, was not great law enforcement technique, kills him or paralyzes him, excuse me. So they burned down a toll city. People fly in to burn down the city. Well, there's other people that fly in and say, if the cops aren't going to stop it, I kind of like America. I feel bad for shop owners. I don't like innocent people being, being, being tortured. I don't want to see livelihoods burned. I'm going to have to take action. Now, did I look at the profile as a 17-year-old is going to take action from out of town to come in with a rifle because they don't let handguns in? He said, I prefer to use a handgun. I can only use a rifle. So he does not want trouble in this video of this whole thing. So now we're going to reevaluate when we take a step back from guns, law, law enforcement. That's mm -hmm. what you want in America in 2019. You're not too happy looking back now. Oh, that's a great point. We're talking to our friend Brian Kilmeade. You know him as well as host of Fox and Friends, and he's got a new book out on Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. I, I one of the stunt, one of the actually things that stunned me and the judge Brian and I know you, I know you saw this part of the trial. This is from yesterday when Rittenhouse was on the stand. Prosecution was cross examining, and they were they were asking him. Well, not asking him. They were stating that his silence up until this point was essentially admission of guilt. Now, I thought that we had wow. the right to remain silent in this country. I, what happened to that? So, to me, you asked the simplest question ever. We know the answer to the point. The judge, appointed by a Democratic president, a uh, Democrat, um, said, what are you doing? You know, it was outraged by it. I told you twice, you're doing it again. Are you trying to throw this game? Are you actually being paid off? I mean, what are you doing? But I was shocked to see on other channels they actually said the judge was out of line. How dare the judge talk like that? How dare he act like that? And I put together the same show. Uh, as you know, Dan, I got a three-hour show too. Yes, so sir. I'm always yes. looking for these collection of montages to give you an idea of the channels you're not watching. But maybe a, four, uh, maybe a third of America is. And they, they think the judge is out of line. Yes. They think this is an example of white supremacy because a white kid looks like he's going to get off uh, for a shooting that a black guy would have been would have went to prison for life for. So that leaves me dumbfounded. 
because I thought we could all grieve on the right to remain silent. I thought so, too. To that point, we're talking to our friend Brian Kilmeade. Can't get that one soundbite ready of his ringtone. So the first thing is they were saying, oh, the judge is wearing an American flag tie today. He must be uh, a conservative because oh, apparently, I guess, Democrats, progressives or whomever, they hate the American flag. And then this. Now, everyone is saying this might be a little difficult to hear. It is a soundbite of his ringtone. And yeah, apparently his phone went off and everyone's like, that's Lee Greenwood. It's I don't think it's Lee Greenwood. I actually think it's a Kenny Rogers song. We can't figure it out. And we're music nerds. So play a little bit. I'm just, I bet Brian can know something about this. I talked about. Do you have any idea from that? Clearly there's a horn in it. Uh, play yeah, it again, play it my, again for him. Beginning of the actions that I had talked about. It sounds like it could be the beginning of Proud American. I mean, it could be, perhaps. But, I mean, you know what's crazy? You're just talking about a patriotic song. I know. And one party is associated with patriotism and one isn't. Isn't that embarrassing? It's crazy. And that people are seizing on something like that as a way to say, well, maybe they we should start this trial over. Seems like the judge is biased. That's, I mean, that's the argument that the same people you were talking about, Brian, that they've that they've been making. I remember when the left used to not like things like the Patriot Act and they used to not like aggressive prosecutions and they used to not like when due process was denied or when criminality was immediately assumed. What happened? When did that change? Everything, everything's flipped. I mean, you're going to see down the road, too. You're going to see Republicans move away from corporate America. We're seeing them yeah. uh, simulating with working class America. We're watching it. I thought. Marco Rubio really outlined it brilliantly a couple of weeks ago. But the same thing I think you're seeing now. I mean, when uh, when you have a flag and it exercises 50 percent of the country as if you're trying to make a statement. Yeah. That I live in America, uh, yeah. that if you yeah. like patriotic <laughs> songs, that means you're blind to America. Uh, the South had slaves at one point. I it's, it's incredible. Yeah. But people have to just tone data. People got to tone it down on both sides. We have to tone it down. You can't blame Trump anymore. Yeah, this is we're, we're grasping for things now, not you or I, but when we're seeing things, this is I used to say, well, Donald Trump is fighting everybody that throws a punch at him and that that's getting his supporters and detractors all mm -hmm. exercising and they're still reaching for Trump, but they're finding other things now like that. Exactly. They're upset about that. Meanwhile, people are trying to figure out, OK, how much more expensive is Turkey for Thanksgiving going to be this year? Uh, and this, my stuffing and all the sides and everything else. And they're still trying to somehow blame the previous administration for what Biden, the results of his policy. They act like he hasn't been in office for six months. They act like he hasn't been president for six months. And that that apparently this is something that I guess Trump is magical and can do all this tomorrow Mar-a-Lago down in Florida. Biden was saying, oh, I can't believe how high gas prices are during my own administration, during the Biden ah. administration due to his policies. Your thoughts. <laughs> Uh, a couple of things. You have that, that, I'm sure people have told you this. That's the shiniest microphone ever. I, I went off. It is so cool. Plant. I know Rush had the gold. I just got, I just take it out of the box. <laughs> and we just put it, clearly, you're trying to make a statement. I got to be bougie with mine, Brian. You know me. I mean, uh, no, it's no, got to bling a little bit. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying back off. Try to match this. You probably can't. And I got to shine it every day. You want I'm a sure flat you're... black mic? We can get you a flat black mic. We'll get I it. I will know. like that. Okay. If I found my way into studio, but here, don't you feel good, Dana? Don't you feel better about this? And this made me feel really good. Number one, to hear Joe Manchin say, "I'm a moderate." Mm. Why do people expect me to go along with this? Wow, people are admitting they're moderates, admitting that I don't like this. We shouldn't be spending now, and I don't know. You're a Democrat. That's what we used to think. We used to look at issues with rationality right. and say, "Yeah, I'm going to take on my party here." I'm, you know, I'm, I know I'm a Republican, but I don't agree with this. When he said that, that was the first time in a long time that we had that outside people come out against Trump and his behavior. But don't you like the fact that he is getting the approval rating he deserves? Yes. No it's one is satisfying. just saying for Joe Biden, 36, 37 percent. And 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 so incompetent as Kamala Harris been, the American people actually demand more. She's at 27 percent having French accents. I was going to say, is that why she switched the accent? To maybe, yes. maybe she thought they would I attract mean, people more. Just made me think of Ratatouille. That's all I thought of was that movie. Right. Well, yeah. I, you know what? I don't watch enough French accent movies because I'm so busy. But I, <laughs> I will say that Kamala Harris is actually in Europe talking about the integrity of Libya's border. When she's running from our border, which has no integrity, 
thanks to her. Yes. Who is making up her, who's putting together her things to do list? It is almost as if they turned on her. Then she hired, in, she hired a communications expert to help raise her image. That communication expert, did, is that before or after the child actor is talking about space? Somebody's trying to, I mean, it's like self-sabotage. I think that no matter how many people she gets in to help her, they and they tried, I thought, over spring, they had, didn't they have a bunch of people that got together in the Hamptons to try to figure out how they can bail out her low, low approval numbers and still yes. nothing. Uh, we're talking to my friend Brian Kilmeade. I have to ask you, and first off, congrats on the book, The President and the Freedom Fighter, Abraham Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and their battle to save America's soul Two very different men, two very different approaches, but they had that big common ground between them about freedom and liberty and equality over equity. Uh, why did you choose? Why, so because you you've had this has been like a you know a, a, your historical series. You've had George Washington Secret Six, which I love the Tripoli Pirates. What made you choose this this particular story in American history? Well, I mean, I was kind of trying. To, I was thinking about trying to avoid the Civil War because it's been so done. Mm. Do these uh, the TV series, uh, the reenactments, all these different movies on it. Uh, the movie, the book of the year, I think it was three years ago, was David Blight's uh, book on Frederick Douglass. I literally have gotten since this since I started this book, I've gotten four other Lincoln books that were fantastic. I'm like, oh, let me see if I can get something out of this. So how do you do something that's been so done? I'm not saying I think most of the stuff has been great, but so done. So I thought, what about if I talk about their relationship? What if I talk about the fact that they had in common, both self-made men, both nobody would have bet on their success and survival, let alone being living down in infamy in American history. And what is it about our country that we seem to get the right person mm. at the right time? And they usually come out of nowhere. And, and what about these human beings, even though they got statues and they deserve to be on buildings, they were still human beings. And you see some of their the issues that they had or the circumstances they were in. And I thought if I could humanize them, talk about the parallel lines they were they were uh, they were walking separately, how they came together briefly, and how our country benefited from it. If I could do it in a compelling fox-like way, right to the point, leaving a lot of the nuance and the size of the trees and the and the speed of the wind. If I could leave that descriptive out, get to the point, but be 100% accurate with two people that wrote down everything. If they weren't writing, they were giving speeches and they were transcribed. In Frederick Douglass's case, he he was the editor of the North Star and he was a key columnist on the, on the Liberator and wrote his biography seven years after escaping slavery. So, okay, excuse me, don't tell me you don't you don't buy that or a wrong impression. That's what he said about Lincoln. That's what Lincoln said. Make you know, a little, he says, I believe everyone should be free to paraphrase, but I don't believe the races are equal. He believed white people uh, were smarter than black people. The interracial marriage shouldn't happen. Well, that's when he was early on in 1850. And then as he as he grows in 1860, he thinks colonization is the only way. Is that saying Lincoln's perfect? Absolutely not. I just told you he wasn't. Right. But do I see a man growing in his life, seeing the seeing what it takes to keep this country together in in his term, in his second term and first term, and then doing what is necessary, and then the actions and the and the nuances and the witnesses at Psalm. And Frederick Douglass's own words, I'll paraphrase. The minute I saw him, I knew he made late eyes on him. I knew he earned the, the right nickname, Honest Dave. Oh. He saw the deepness in which he thought, the way he listened, and also the reason why he was doing things. And that was, America has to be ready for these changes, or else I will have no country to govern. And by the time he was done, I believe Frederick Douglass was one of the people that he valued most on the planet. How could a racist, how could someone who thought the blacks were less believe that? Right. Couldn't. He evolved. What Our country evolved. So get some perspective before you burn down a building and tear down a country. Amen to that. And I love your point, too. People who came out of nowhere seemingly at the right time. That's providence. That is the pattern of providence in this. And I love how you leave so much room for that because you just skip the facts and you allow and you allow it to breathe and, and people can people get that and, and you you do such a great job at that the book is the president and the freedom fighter abraham lincoln frederick douglas their battle to save america's soul congratulations my friend brian kilmeade love talking to you my friend always enjoy being with you congrats on your uh, successes continue, continue success dana to you and i'm jealous of your microphone and everything else talk to me we'll we'll hook you up we'll hook you up my <laughs> I friend can't wait. thanks so much Bye. good to see you